Is there a thing like reincarnation? What happens between two lives? Do we plan our next life? Very important questions, I think. And about these themes, I talk with Mr. Robert Schwartz. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, very happy that you are here. And you see that, of course, at Mystica TV. Yes, reincarnation, past lives and all these things. Mr. Robert Schwartz, I'm very happy that you are here and that we can talk about these themes. You wrote three wonderful books here in German. Mutige Seelen, the first book, Jede Seele plant ihren Weg, the second, and Die Mission der Seele. Very touching books about uh, reincarnation, about uh, what happens between the lives. And um, first, of course, I, I'm very interested in how did you start with this work? What happens in your life that you come to these themes? What, what happened in my life is that uh, back in 2003, I was working as a marketing and communications consultant. And I found this work to be very unfulfilling. Uh, but I also had the sense that there was a higher calling to my life. I just didn't know what it was. I tried various things to figure out what it was. None of them were really shedding any light on the matter. And so I did something that I had never done before. I went to have a session with a psychic medium. I wasn't even sure if I believed in mediumship, but I thought, you know, it can't hurt. So in this session with the medium, she started to channel my spirit guides. I didn't even know what a spirit guide was at that time. But she explained to me a guide is a highly evolved non-physical being with whom we plan our lives before we're born and who then guides us through our lives after we get here. And through this particular medium, I was able to talk with my guides. Mm -hmm. Now they said a lot of amazing things to me that day, one of which was they said, you planned your life, including your biggest challenges, before you were born. How did you feel about <coughs> this, if you heard this first? I, I thought, this is crazy. Why, <laughs> why would I do that? Yeah. You know, why would anyone do that? But I asked them that question, and they had an answer. They knew about my challenges without me even telling them what they had been. They were able to explain why you wanted, before you were born, to have these experiences. And so, you know, when you're talking to beings who know literally everything about you without you telling them anything, that gives them some credibility. So after that session, I thought about this information constantly for days, for weeks, and it triggered a major spiritual awakening for me and propelled me on the path to writing the books. Wow. And um, a little bit later, you get the idea that you can help other people with that. How did this start? For me, this information about planning my life was very healing. Yeah. Because it allowed me to review my life and see the deeper meaning and the deeper purpose of the challenges. So when it had this healing effect, I thought, well, this information could bring a similar kind of healing to other people. And that was really the motivation for going on to write the books. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes it's uh, when you realize a new knowledge, you want to tell everyone, everybody about this. How was it for you? Did you tell this friends and how did they react to your new experiences? You know, at, at first I was very cautious about telling people <laughs> because, well, for two reasons. I'm, I'm very respectful of other people's paths. Yeah. And even to this day, I, I always say my work is an offering, not an attempt at persuasion. But also, I come from a very conventional family that I wasn't sure would be open to this kind of thinking. And, uh, you know, I, when I started writing the first book, the metaphor I used in my own mind was that th this book is like a little sapling, a little tree. And right now, it's very vulnerable. Somebody could come along and chop it down quite easily. Mm -hmm. Let it grow and become strong. And then once it's a strong, fully mature tree, then I'll start to tell the world about it. And that was the approach I took. Mm, wow. Yeah, I feel in the second book, it's more also about healing. Yeah, yes. and it's uh, very touching because in the second book, you write a little bit more uh, also about your knowledge and your right. experiences. Um, uh, let's, let's look at this uh, in a short few. Okay, there are more lives. Uh, we are here on Earth since thousands of years. Yes. And why is there a thing like reincarnation? What happens with our soul from life to life? I think the soul is doing a number of things here on the physical plane. The main one being that it's experiencing contrast. So as I understand it, we as souls are made from the energy of unconditional love. But in the non-physical realm, which is our true home, there's no contrast. It's a realm of great love and light and peace and joy. 
This means that we as souls don't fully understand or appreciate who we are mm -hmm. as beings made from unconditional love. So I think what we're doing here on the physical plane is that we come here for the experience of what you could call the not love, which we would all agree there's a lot of, because then when we go back home at the end of a physical lifetime, we have a much more profound self-knowing of what unconditional love really is. It's all about the contrast. Mm. And I think we can understand it because there is a, um, uh, a personality and a soul. Is that it? Yes. Soul is, uh, soul is always connected with that love. Is that right? Yes, as I, as I understand it, there, there are several layers or levels to the universe. Mm -hmm. So the highest would be a level of total oneness. All beings are one. Then you have at a slightly lower vibration, the individuated soul. And then the soul takes a small portion of its energy and puts it in a physical body. That becomes the personality, you and me and everyone listening today. So the personality may be or may not be aligned with the soul. Many personalities don't realize that they are souls and they're uh, driven by their egos, they're pursuing agendas of the ego. But uh, many of us have planned great challenges before we were born for the very purpose of taking us away from that egoic identity and opening us up to our identities as souls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I'm here on earth and I suffer, I'm ill, it's a very hard life. <clears throat> What can I do that I can trust a little bit more that, is, that this thing has a sense for me? Because when I'm in suffering, I'm just suffering. It's so hard. What, what can I do? Well, in my opinion, the most profound thing that you can do is to do something called a between lives soul regression. This is what I, as a hypnotist, do. Most of my practice is between lives regressions. What happens in a between lives regression is that you go briefly into a past life, one that had a big impact on the plan for the current lifetime. Mm -hmm. Then you transition back to the non-physical realm. You talk with your guide about why you were shown that particular past life. And then your guide will take you to what is called the Council of Elders. And these are the very wise, loving, and highly evolved beings who oversee reincarnation on Earth. The Council knows everything about you. So when you get in front of the council, this is a potentially transformative experience. They can tell you, why are you ill? Did you plan your illness before you were born? If so, why did you make those plans? Mm -hmm. They can tell you how to heal from the illness. <clears throat> They have answers to all your questions. So, and uh, we plan the most important things in our life, you think? That's certainly what I believe. Yeah. Now, not everything is planned. Mm -hmm. But when I did the, the research for the books, Uh, what I found that is, uh, for any major type of life challenge, about 70% of the time, on average, it's planned before birth. Okay. Wow. And do you have a special story for us, uh, uh, which shows how uh, a hard life is also has a sense of what, what happens with a person? You have your wonderful stories. Yeah. Which one would you prefer to tell? Well, in, in the first book, uh, Courageous Souls, Yes. Uh, there's a chapter about the pre-birth planning of accidents, which mm -hmm. I put in quotes because yeah. they aren't really accidents. Yeah. One of the stories in that chapter is uh, an American woman named Christina. She's in her 60s now, but many years ago when she was in her 20s, she was an administrative assistant at a college in California. One of her daily duties in that job was to pick up her boss's mail. The mailboxes were in the basement of the building in which she worked. One day she went down the stairs to those mailboxes just as she had many times before. But unbeknownst to her on that day, somebody had planted a pipe bomb in the mailbox. So when she inserted her hand to pick up her boss's mail, this bomb detonated. It picked her up off the ground, threw her 10 feet backwards against a concrete wall. There were six foot splinters of wood that were shot like arrows out of a bow into mm -hmm. the wall around her. Two fingers were severed, both eardrums were ruptured and flames from the explosion scorched her body from head to toe. When she got to the hospital, doctors had to hold magnets over her eyes to extract the shrapnel from the pipe. So a level of suffering that's almost unimaginable. <clears throat> her recovery took two years and 10 reconstructive surgeries. Mm -hmm. At one point during the two year period, she was lying in her hospital bed in a tremendous amount of pain when she heard a voice inside her head, a voice that was not her own. It turns out that the force from that explosion had opened up her psychic gift. She had become clairaudient. And the voice she heard was a spirit guide. And the guide said to her, you planned this. Of course, she said, why? And then the guide told her, and here's what he said. 
He said, you wanted before you were born to have a lifetime as a gifted healer. And you knew that if you could heal yourself from the devastating effects of this bomb explosion, you could then take all of that wisdom and knowledge about healing and turn it outward in service to others. And this is in fact what she did. She went on to get a PhD in speech language pathology. She set up a private clinical practice. And at this point in her career, she's healed literally thousands of people. Mm -hmm. And the only reason she can do that is because she healed herself first from that bomb explosion. Now, when I interviewed her for the book, she said two extraordinary things to me. The first was she said, Rob, I have completely forgiven the person who planted the bomb. Now remember, this is somebody who had magnets held above her eyeballs at the hospital. So that statement alone, I think, is extraordinary. But then she said something even more amazing. She said, Rob, I'm deeply grateful to the bomber. And she's sincere when she says that. So to me, this is one of the most amazing stories I've seen with what you can do with an awareness of your pre-birth plan. She used her understanding of her pre-birth plan to get to a place of total forgiveness and then total gratitude. Now her story is unusual because it's a bomb, but she herself is not unusual. If she can do it, then all of your viewers can do it in regard to whatever their challenges yeah. are. Well, That's what an awareness of pre-birth planning can do. And I read also in uh, your book that uh, she, uh, you and she also planned to meet each other in, in this yeah, life. And, yeah, and that was something that came as quite a <laughs> surprise yeah. to me. Because we, we were in the middle of a channeling session for her story. And we went into her pre-birth planning session. One of the channels has the ability to do that. We were listening to the conversation that had taken place when she was talking with the bomber and they were planning the bomb explosion. And then there I was in their pre-birth planning session yeah. saying, you know, we will meet later and I will tell your story and things like that. Total shock to me when that happened. Wow. Yeah. Do you think that nowadays <clears throat> the people are more open to these themes? Do you think we live in another time where so, so the people more and more realize these things? I, I think it's becoming increasingly so. Uh, it's sort of the 100th monkey effect, if you're familiar yes, with that. Yes. Yeah. Robert so, Chaitrake, yeah. 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 So as, as one person awakens, it affects exponentially more and more people. And I think that's what's happening around the world now. Mm. Wow. Okay, we plan our next life um, before we come also again on Earth, and then we are on Earth. We didn't realize, we didn't remember to these plans. What happens in these planning sessions? Uh, are there, uh, are the, uh, the stories very similar or is, uh, are the, there are some similarities in the stories about the plans? The reasons for planning life challenges uh, overlap across sessions. So the main reasons for planning life challenges would be to balance karma, mm -hmm. uh, to heal from past lives, to experience contrast, as we talked about, to be of service to others. Christina, who became a healer, is a good example of that. And uh, the other main reason is to correct false beliefs or false feelings about mm. oneself. Mm -hmm. So those basic intentions span across sessions. Now within that framework, there are many smaller sub-intentions, you could say, as to what somebody's trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of it has to do with cultivating certain qualities that are important to the soul. I call them divine virtues. It's things like forgiveness, patience, empathy, unconditional love, acceptance, generosity. Over time I put together a list of about 28 that came up more often than others and this is what I work with in sessions with clients. And we try to isolate the two or three that they're working on in their given lifetime and usually it's two or three. Mm. What can we do when we uh, suffer, when we don't know how to go on? Um, what can we do that we remember or, there, or realize that there is the infinity which we are also connected always? What can we do? Is meditation a good way or trust in life or what do you think? I think meditation is a great way. I think prayer and meditation are the mm -hmm. two, two most mm -hmm. important things anybody can do. But in addition to that, there are a lot of ways you can gain insight into your pre-birth plan. The most powerful one, as I mentioned, I think is the between life soul regression. Yeah. But any good astrologer can tell you something about your pre-birth plan. Numerology is a great oh, way to okay. learn about the pre-birth plan. Uh, dream work, mm -hmm. 
before you go to bed at night, ask your soul to send you a dream that tells you something about your life plan. Okay. That's very effective. And then having a paper and something to write when I awake. Or I'm a digital awake recorder. Write, write down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Write it down. Mm -hmm. um, uh, automatic writing, also known as psychography. Okay. Yeah. You become a channel yourself and channel mm -hmm. information from spirit. All of these things are very effective. So we are also connected always. We always yeah. are. I, I think most of us forget that that's yeah. the case. Yeah. But we are connected. <laughs> yeah. And there's a thing like karma. Karma is something misunderstood. So uh, you, uh, you did uh, something wrong now, and, you know, something happens to you. But what is karma in your side, in your view? What I see in my work is that it's a sense of unbalanced energy and it's you yourself who decide <laughs> if the experience is incomplete. So for example, let's say the two people had a past life together in which one was ill and the other person was that person's caregiver. When they transition back into spirit and have their life review, as we all do, they may or may not have a sense of unbalanced energy around that relationship. Mm -hmm. They decide themselves. Nobody else tells them that. If they feel it's incomplete, then they will be motivated to do something to balance the unbalanced energy. The easiest thing to do would be to trade places. So the one who was ill plans the life challenge of caregiving. The one who was the caregiver plans the life challenge of illness. That's a basic example of how mm -hmm. it works. Mm -hmm. Um, what, how, how changed your life? What is in your life? What happened in the last 20 years doing with this work and uh, working with many people? Do you more and more trust life and are you more and more connected with this infinite uh, dimension? I think so. I mean, this is the focus of everything I do every day now. Yeah. And I have a much more fulfilling life than I used to. I feel like I'm fulfilling my unique soul plan helping people in the process. Uh, it's just a completely different life and, and much more gratifying. That's yeah. wonderful yeah, to yeah. live your, your, your work. Yeah. It's just, I feel like, like you also, uh, it's wonderful to, to do what you feel, what you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you need uh, uh, courage. Yeah. Was it in the first begin, uh, Difficult to talk about these themes, to talk w with many people about these themes? It was. Uh, you know, it's not a mainstream idea yet. No. And um, I didn't know if people were going to be interested in what I was saying. I didn't know how they would respond to what I was saying. Uh, but, you know, there's an old expression that an author is somebody who has something to say and absolutely has to say it. And uh, that, yes. that was me. Yes. I had to say yes. it. I wonder uh, <coughs> that uh, reincarnation or uh, something else is not an important topic in science. I think it should be, or? I, I think so too. I wonder it really. <laughs> um, wonderful. What are your plans now? Do you write a fourth book? Um, I, I am going to start in a fourth book. Yeah. Uh, anybody who's listening, if they would like to uh, receive a free Between Lives regression, they're welcome to write in and be considered for the next book. Uh, they'd have to be fluent in English, and they have to know from experience with hypnosis that they go into trance easily and deeply. Mm -hmm. But anybody who meets those criteria, uh, just go to YourSoulsPlan.com and write to me through the contact form, and then we'll take it from there. Great, yeah. We do it. Also, on your text under the video, we, we okay. get that. Uh, okay, maybe my last question, if uh, here are in the audience are people who Okay, who suffer and who don't believe in reincarnation, who are very, I don't know, it's, uh, it's not real. What can you tell these, those people? What helps the people to realize there is an infinite, uh, infinite uh, dimension, there is a reincarnation? What reasons helps to understand this? I, I think the message that I would most want people to have is how courageous you are for coming to Earth. You know, it's mm -hmm. my understanding that Earth is not literally the most difficult place to have a lifetime, but it is one of the most difficult. Many beings know there would be great value in coming here, but don't have the courage to do so. So just the fact that you are here in body makes you among the most courageous beings in the universe. And once you know that, once you recognize that, it changes everything about who you see yourself to be and how you feel about your life. Wonderful. Mr. Schwartz, thank you very much. I'm very touched and wish you a good, uh, good father work. Thank um, you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, this was in English in Mystica TV. 
very important topic, I think. All the best for you. <laughs>